Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be doing this pop art poster. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and also share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on any future videos. And also, to learn everything about Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training and you'll find links for that in the description. Okay, let's get to it. This pop art poster has two basic parts to it. First, we're making a brand new art background down here. We'll be using filters to do this. We're then clipping out a portrait. So we're moving the background from her picture and then applying filters onto her to give us this pop art look for the portrait. Okay, let's see how this whole thing is done. I'll start off with a brand new file. Let's just get rid of this one. There we are. So file new, and I'll do it as a blank file and at the default Photoshop element size, 6 by 4 at 300 pixels per inch. Choose OK. And there it is. Here's our basic file. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to fill this in with gray. It's a nice solid gray tone. So click on the foreground color. And in here you want something over here in the middle. And the one that I used, I'll just set it in down here, was 767676. Right there, just kind of a mid-tone gray right there. Nothing really special about that gray, just a, a straight gray tone is what you want. Choose OK, and then just grab the paint bucket and fill that layer. We'll now convert this into stripes. Go up to the filter menu, come down to the filter gallery, and everything we'll be doing here, it will be inside of the halftone pattern, and this is in the sketch section right there. So open up sketch halftone pattern. On the right hand side change this to line. See there it gives you lines. Set the contrast all the way to the top and set the size all the way to the top. So high contrast and really big lines That's as far as it goes on that scale. And then choose OK. There we are. Now I want to change the gray lines to white. So let's come down here just click on the reset color button right there and then hit that inverse foreground background so there's our white for our foreground grab the paint bucket again and come into any one of the gray lines and what's on here says contiguous make sure that's not checked tolerance is at zero and then come into the gray line click in there and that changes all the gray lines to white there we are okay now let's make a copy of this layer just drag it up here to the new layer button make a copy like that and then click on any one of the control handles. So let's click on the one right there. Just click it and it brings up the options, the transform options down here. Now down where it says angle, let's change the angle here. I'll just type this in to 69. It just spins that around and then choose OK. So now I have two sets of stripes, the background stripes and the foreground stripes at this angle of 69 degrees. I now need to blend these two layers together. We'll do that using a blend mode. Go over here to the blend modes. Come down to exclusion. And that gives you this checkerboard pattern in there. So there's your checkerboard pattern. That's from the foreground stripe lines being blended into the background stripe lines giving you a checkerboard. Let's now put our coloration in here. Come down to the background layer. This is the first set of lines be putting a new layer in here, gradient layer. Let's go up to layer, new fill layer, gradient. Right there, don't have that box checked, leave that unchecked, choose OK. Now the one you want, let's just open these up, the one you want is right down here. There it is, violet, green, and orange. Just choose that, and then choose OK. That applies the violet, green, and orange gradient onto that background. Now it's in front of the background there, as you can see, so it's hiding the background stripes. We're seeing it through the foreground stripes, which is fine, but it's hiding the background. So we need to apply a blend mode to the gradient to blend this into those background stripes. So again, back to our blend modes, and then come down to linear light, which is right down here. Choose that one, and there's the linear light. And there it is, background is done. It's that easy to do. Now you can have a lot of fun with this just by changing these different blend modes. 
I'm just going to go up here to the top and I'll use the wheel or my mouse and I'll just roll down through these different blend modes. You can see I get different kinds of effects in here depending upon which blend mode you're on. And this is just the blend mode for the background layer. All kinds of interesting things in here. Okay, set this one back to the linear light. Let's look at the blend modes on the foreground, back up to normal. Again, I'll just roll down with the mouse and see what shows up in here, different effects, depending upon the different blend mode that you use. So all kinds of things you can do with this. A lot of possibilities. Just put this back to exclusion again. Okay, so background is finished. We can now put the girl in here. I'll just open up that picture. Now, I already have this open, of course. It's right here. You can get the link for downloading this picture on the support page I have for this video, and you'll find the link for that page, of course, in the description. I'm just going to take this picture. Now, it comes in as a floating window. If yours is not doing that, go up to Edit, come down to Preferences and General, and make sure that this checkbox right there is checked. Allow floating documents in expert mode. When that's checked, your windows come in as floating windows. The reason I like that is I can then just grab the background layer, drag it over here, let go, and it copies that in. I can then close this one down. I'm going to now go up here to the upper left-hand corner, and this just pull the size down, and I'll resize her so that she's just the same height as the window. There we go. So the upper and lower is the same height. I want to have the top of her hair sticking out beyond this right side of the diagonal lines just a little bit. We'll do a little fine tuning on that in a second, but it's just pushing her a little bit over here to the right hand side. Choose OK. We now need to make a mask around her to mask out her background so the background is changed to that pop art background which you've already created. To do that, I'll grab the lasso tool, set this on new. I have my feathering set at zero. And I'll just do a real fast lasso in here in pretty close. Doesn't need to be real tight. We'll fix this with the Refine Edge tool. But just a fast lasso. The nice thing about this pop art look is if, if it's a little bit off on this, it's not going to make any difference. No one's going to see anything. It's going to just blend right in nicely. Go clear off, clear back to the beginning, and back up there. I need to now do a little selection right here and right here. A little bit of background showing in there. So this is inside of my selection, so I want to remove that. So click on Subtract, and then just a little subtraction right in here. Doesn't need to be nice. We'll clean that up in just a second. Okay, there's our basic selection. We can now go up here to the Select menu, come down to Refine Edge. Brings up the Refine Edge dialog box. You can see there's the brush on that. I'm going to bring my size up to about 50, just a little bit larger. There it is. Now with the Refine Edge, just come in here and start out against the red. I have mine set up here on Overlay. I normally use the Overlay setting on this. I'll leave all these settings as is. I won't touch anything in there. We'll be outputting this to a selection when we finish this Refine Edge. Okay, and then just come in here and just paint right over the edge of the red and then come in again and go right over the edge of her face. So it's a couple of passes usually will do it. Just like that. Same thing on the hair. And we'll just go clear around and do a real fast refined edge. Again, this doesn't need to be perfect for this particular project, which makes it nice and fast. Nice, fast, easy project here. There we go. We'll go to the back side and right around down this side and the shoulder. And then inside, just go right around that triangle that we had. And then in here. And there we go. That's all done. Choose OK. There's our selection for that. Now that you have your selection, just click on the layer mask button right there. It makes a layer mask. And we now see the new back running behind her. All we have left to do is just to apply a couple of effects onto her portrait. And we're all finished. The first effect I want to apply here is do a gradient map and put some color onto her. So let's go up here to Layer, come down to Adjustment Layers right here, and Gradient Map. 
Now it says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Make sure that's checked this time. Choose OK. And so what happens is it applies the gradient onto her image. Now the one that we want is right there. It's the blue, red, yellow. And gives a nice real kind of clean gradient. We may touch this up a little bit after we're finished at the very, very end. We'll take a look at that in just a second. So here's our basic gradient. Choose OK. We now want to put a filter onto her. So let's come down to her. The reason I did the gradient first is just to get a sense of what we're going on this one. So come down to the, her layer again. You'll be on the gradient layer. Come down to the image layer right here, the portrait layer. And go up to filter. Back to the filter gallery. We'll be staying in the halftone pattern. But change this to dot. Bring the contrast way down. Let's set the contrast here at 2 to start off with. Bring the size way down. Let's set the size at 3. About like that. Or we can go a little higher if you want to. Maybe up to 5. A little coarser pattern. But anywhere down real low here. 2, 3, 4, 5 in that area. Let's do a 4. There we go. 4 is kind of nice on that. Now notice that this came in and reversed the image. It's now a negative image. So let's invert this image. Make sure you're on this image side. Look for that light blue outline. If, you, if it's over here, double click on this side, light blue outline. Go up to Filter, come down to Adjustments, and Invert. And there we are, just inverts that image. Now if you want to adjust the values at this point, notice how the values have changed a little bit on her image. Go back up here to the gradient map, double click on the thumbnail, click on the gradient itself right here, and at this point you can adjust the gradient. I can move the reds further over so we get more lightness in there, more yellows, or we can come down and grab the midpoint right here, right between the yellow and the red, pull that over, and you can get more yellow in there. The settings you choose will depend upon your image and the size of your dots. The larger the dots, the more you may need to come down here and adjust this. The smaller the dots, the less you might need to make an adjustment. So I just moved the yellow midpoint over just a little bit. In this case, I did it to 37% right there. Let me just do 35, type that in. Choose OK. It just has a bit more yellow in here to the face. OK, so that is finished. Now, if you want to do any little fine tuning on this one, just add another layer above here. Go up to Layer, come down to Adjustment Layer and Levels, where it says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. Make sure that's checked. Choose OK. Here's your Levels, and then we can lighten the image up to the left or darken it down to the right. I think just a little bit darker, maybe a little bit more on the dark side here. So let's pull the darks in just a little bit, maybe about 19 might be nice. And let's just adjust the lightness, maybe let's just do oh, about 1.16 for our middle position and leave the whites clear to the top, which is at 255. Just a little fine tuning, a little adjustment in there. And there we go. There is our pop art portrait. Let's just pull this up and I'll enlarge that a bit. There we go. Now the effects you get on the portrait will depend upon your dot size. I want just one size larger for this version as compared to the beginning image that we did. I kind of like this just a little bit better, a little more pop art look to it. But there you go. Now you can have a lot of fun with this background stuff. There's a lot of possibilities in here using that halftone filter. As you can see, we did two different things with it. The background was one effect, and her face is a different effect using the same halftone filter. Okay, there you go. That's how to do a pop art portrait. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.